Sundal, a couple months ago I sent you an email and asked you if you'd be a part of uh, what we're putting together with Britain Metal, and you very graciously said yes. What was it that attracted you to that project? Probably um, Paul, you know, hit me up and just saying, you know, what's up? This is, you know, and knowing he was involved with it and, and you, I mean, that was enough for me. I think I said that to you, and I was like, that, that covers it, you know? Um, and it seems like it's a genuinely groovy idea, um, the original idea, and something that's needed. So one of the things that we're trying to do is to generate this buzz around up-and-coming metal bands. Talk a little bit about the challenges that are facing bands now, especially looking at it from your perspective, because you did it way back 20 years ago, and now when you look at what these kids are having to face out there, talk to me about those challenges. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. It's like, it's just, the, you know, the times, right? And the, they have their pros and cons also, and... It seemed that seemingly there would be more pros because of the internet. You know, if you're not having to sign a record company to get your music heard anymore, you can actually do it on your own. And if you're pretty savvy business-wise, you can make it work without a record company, which is kind of amazing. Um, so uh, there, there, there's that aspect, and then of course there's the reality of how inundated and saturated the scene is, and it felt that way back back in the day, now more than ever, it seems like everyone and their mother wants to be famous or a rock star right. to some degree, and, and you have the nature of technology where you can pretty much like make somebody who's never meant to play drums sound like a decent drummer, right? You know, yeah. If they're good at editing and fixing things, and, and so there is a generation of musicians that are out there that maybe, you know, weren't really like, it's not, they're just, it's like an avenue for attention versus right. like being a true artistic path. And I always think that the real artists will, you know, you'll see, they'll eventually be heard. Or, or, or at least kind of have more of a shot versus a momentary. Right. Now, I imagine you're the kind of fellow that you can't go out to eat at a restaurant without kids coming up to you and saying, hey, we're, oh, we're, we're, a, we're a pretty underground. <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> it's, uh, it's but I bet you do hear from a lot of young bands and a lot of young musicians. You are. Oh, yeah. And what time. kinds of things do you hear from them? I mean, I just recently, I remember there was a group that uh, was asking me questions um, uh, you know, they were asking me about a record deal situation, and they said that they were in a situation with a couple labels, and they didn't know what to do, and I said, get a lawyer. <laughs> you know, it was like, I mean, that's the first thing, like, get somebody on your side who's going to, because they've got one, you know, and you really got to represent, you need somebody that knows how to be in and out of legal language. And, and then just advise them based on my own experience, and it seems like it was really helpful to them just because, and I think this is the beauty of age, you know, it's like we, we kind of turn this corner and we realize we actually have something to say, you know, and that we've had some life experience and, oh, okay, and I, I, I kind of know how that works a little bit, you know, I mean, not it's always changing, but um, it is a... Uh, it's, I feel grateful for that, actually, you know, that part of being an artist, to give, to give it back, you know. One of the things that we're trying to do with Great New Metal is not only give bands a kickstart in terms of giving them publicity and getting them attention and creating this buzz, but we also recognize that the economics of the business have changed so much over the years that so we want to try to help them, you know, these young up-and-coming bands actually generate a little bit of revenue. Talk a little bit about the economics of the business right now. Well, I think it's like, as long as you can't download a t-shirt, you're in good shape, you know, because uh, that's kind of the saving grace for most of these bands on these types of tours. Merchandise is lifeblood, really. I mean, you're pretty much breaking even otherwise, if you're lucky. Um, and uh, so it's it's one of those things where I think being merch savvy is, is smart, having some interesting artistic direction and sensibility. Um, and of course, I mean, you just can't ever beat, uh, you know, bands that are willing to get out there on the road and do it and have that kind of ambition, because I think that's, that's huge, you know, just really kind of the drive um, to, to get out there and rough it, get in bands, you know, do whatever it takes, it's, um, it's just, it's really, it really tests you, I really realize that, it's like you think some bands have an easy road, but inevitably they get tested, and they see how 
how bad they want this or how serious they are as musicians because you turn that corner and it's like this is a life path I'm, so, I'm not going to law school yeah. or you know doing something else this is this is it man. And, and there's sort of kind of this mystique from whatever life was like in the 80s where being a signed musician was a license to snort cocaine all day right yeah and now even big time established bands are out there humping it just trying totally, to make it man home. yeah it's times are tough you know people aren't getting money off their record sales anymore it doesn't happen it's it's really the reality of touring and and licensing you know i think that's why sean and i have always had one foot in the world as composers and stuff because it's actually work there you know as musicians right. I know a lot of guys that do you do television yeah television music and you know, library music and, uh, and teaching is a big avenue Sean got into a lot of clinic work and all that yeah. so you know you just have to wear a bunch of hats and, and you know we always used to say and I think we still believe that to some degree I still music and if, as long as I'm doing music it's okay you know sure there's ideal variations that you'd rather have generate more flow but at the end of the day it beats the desk job it beats the bartending job you know it beats, it beats working for a living that's what I always tell myself it's working for a living it doesn't feel like work yeah. yeah so ultimately are you are you hopeful would you, would, would you be optimistic if you were a young band coming up today I mean I'm going to introduce a Buddhist philosophy which is the annihilation of hope and that what I mean by that is absolute presence you know like where you just stay here and trust in what's happening and what's unfolding um, and not um, get caught up in some future that doesn't exist or some past that doesn't exist. But that being said, yeah. Um, yes, I am encouraged, really. And I'll, I, I can use the word hopeful in the sense that there's people like you that care and that want to come help, help a brother out, you know, a sister out and say, I, I love this music, I passionately get behind it. And I want to help you guys, help you do this, you know, and I think that's really what it's all about, right? Exactly. Inspiring more art, you know, that's what we're here to do. Exactly right. I have zero musical aptitude or, or skill myself, but yeah, I want to be out here doing what yeah. I can to help. Yeah, you've got an uplifted, energetic vibration, that's enough. <laughs> Thank you very much. Anything else you want to add in this? I think we're good. All right. Thanks, Thanks so much. Yeah. I appreciate it.